Today we're going to be talking about solving quadratic equations by factoring. The factored form of a quadratic equation can be given by this expression, where x minus p is a factor, x minus q is a factor. Therefore, we find our zeros by our zero product property. We set x minus p equal to zero, and we set x minus q equal to zero. And then we'd solve each one of those equations. So below here, we have our zero product property. So when you have a factored equation, you, and that's set equal to zero, you can set either one of the factors equal to zero. And that makes sense because either that factor is equal to zero or the other factor is equal to zero. Because zero times anything is going to get us zero. Write a quadratic equation in standard form where we have our two roots. So we fill into our x minus p times x minus q equals zero. Well, one of them is p, one of them is q. So I have x minus one half x minus a negative 5. Now it's just a matter of multiplying out. Now what I'm going to do to get rid of those fractions, because we're set equal to 0, I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So the 2 gets distributed to the x squared, so that's 2x squared plus 10x minus x minus 5 equals 0. Then we're going to combine our like terms. So that's our equation that has 1 half and negative 5 as its roots. Now solving this. This is why factoring was so important to us in the last lesson. What we need to do is we need to factor out our greatest common factor. We have at least a 3y in both terms. So we're left with a 3y plus 1 equals 0. So now we set each one of those factors. So set 3y equal to 0 and 3y plus 1. And yes, I want you to show me those actual setting equal to 0. Now we can say y equals 0 and negative 1 third. OK, our next example. x minus 3, x minus 3. So we set x minus 3 equal to 0 both times. So we get x equals 3. This is what we call a double root. It's the same answer essentially twice. Next one, y squared equals 36. Make sure that you get one side to be 0 when you are solving by factoring. So I bring the 36 over. This is our difference of two squares. So then you set one of your factors equal to 0. We set the other factor equal to 0, so we get our plus and minus 6. Now keep in mind, what we could have also done here, which might be a little bit more of an efficient method, is square root of both sides. But again, remember, whenever we square root both sides, you need to have plus or minus. That plus or minus is what students often forget. So I got the same answer essentially two different ways.
Our next one, factoring this one. And this is why we spent so much time the other day factoring. I need two things that multiply to be a negative 15, but we're going to add to be a negative 2. So since the 15 is negative, 1 has to be negative, 1 has to be positive. Well, negative 5 and 3. So we set x minus 5 equal to 0 and the x plus 3 equal to 0. So we have 5 and negative 3. And those are our two answers. Okay, the next one. Now this one's a little bit more challenging because of this 5 in here. So I'm going to take the 5 and I'm going to multiply it to the 24. Now I need to look at factors of 120 that are going to add to be 34. And you might want to pause the video and see if you can find those factors. We know they both have to be plus. And two factors, since it's 34, there are going to be two numbers that are maybe far away from each other. Works out that 30 times 4 is 120 and they add to be 34. Now this is what you need to remember. And I almost just made this mistake, but I looked at my notes. I've multiplied the 5 to the 24. I now need to divide that 5 out. So 30 divided by 5 is 6. The 5 since 4 over 5 doesn't simplify, the 5 swings up and becomes a coefficient. So now you set each one of your factors equal to 0. So then we get negative 6, and we get negative 4 fifths. And if you have to go through solving this 5x plus 4 by hand, by subtracting the 4 and dividing by the 5, don't be, don't be ashamed to do that. The more work you show me, the more points I can give you, if you even if you make a silly little mistake. Okay, next. The entrance to an office building is an arch in the shape of a parabola whose vertex is the height of the arch. The height of the arch is given by this equation. where x is the horizontal distance from the center of the arch. So what we have there is we have an arch that's given by this equation. Okay. H is my distance up from the ground. The center of the arch is right there. So x is standing for that distance from the center of the arch over from the center of our arch over. How wide is the arch at ground level? So I've kind of drawn the ground level for us. What do we need to find here? We need to find the x-intercepts. We need to find those zeros. We need to find the roots. What is the arch of the height when it's above the ground when it's sitting on the ground that's zero so we set our height equal to zero we factor then we set 3 minus x equal to zero 3 plus x equal to zero so we get x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. So that means that from my center over, that's 3 feet. From my center over, that's also 3 feet. So what's the whole distance? How wide is it from 
end to end, well, that's going to be six feet. Okay, there are your lesson questions for the day. Please make sure those are submitted on time.